Welcome to another guitar show. Here's what to expect on today's episode. <laughs> to make it sound better, you would put it at this side exactly. of the fret. I sort of saw that as going round in a shape, uh -huh. round the fretboard like this. Structure, keeping the, making sure that the song structure is simple, will enable you to learn more songs because you know the first four bars, you know the song. So in this episode of Another Guitar Show, we're going to be asking how can we learn more songs faster, which is really something I know Andy focuses a lot on using songs to help learn patterns of guitar, scales, all that stuff. But it informs so much about the library of your kind of musical knowledge. And you may be able to see from our nice accessories, they're not there for fashion. We're going to be talking about where to put a capo and little tricks that Andy's got to help you find kind of little links that you can make. So what do you think about that, Andy? I think a lot of people are really scared about getting a capo or using one and don't use them enough. It can be difficult for starters, can't it? I was one of them. Mm. I praise using a capo. I recommend every student to get one, especially those that follow my lessons in particular. But I started playing guitar seriously when I was about 12, year, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Probably got it when I was 12. Um, it was a Christmas present. And I didn't get a capo till I was about 17. 17! <laughs> Maybe 16, but like I was in a band. We'd done gigs before yeah. I got a capo. And I remember the guy in the guitar shop, you know, demoing it, seeing what it was. And it was like, it changes the key. But he didn't explain what use that had yeah. beyond it just sounding higher. That's literally what I say, it just yeah. sounds higher, which is essentially what it does, but there's a lot more to it than that. Um, let's just show the, the two oh, main yes, types, there are many of us. This is a real fancy, fancy capo, really. A G7 capo. This is the one that I use, and the great thing about it is all a capo is ever going to do is clamp down the strings at a certain fret. There are even really posh capos these days that hold down certain strings, yeah, yeah, not others. Great. We're not talking about those. Nope. All six strings, essentially using you know a, a capo instead of what our first finger might do, like a barring finger. Exactly. But what that does is a couple of really cool things. Um, the same thing would if you can put it on the third fret. This is a trigger type capo, which is typically the one that I recommend it's because it's easy, easy to use. Um, clip it on and off. The one thing I will say about that one in particular, if you just try and show that there's, I think it's really flat, I think mm -hmm. it's a really straight one, that. That's a classical um, guitar capo. Yeah. And the fact that it's perfectly straight and our fretboards are not I perfectly straight. This has a little arch to it. Many other trigger type capos have a little arch to them. Uh -huh. Not too much, but that lets them ring out better. So that one might struggle might to ring do. out as well. It was just the ones that we had. But if there is ever a string that doesn't ring out well, like that one's got a little bit of buzz mm -hmm. to it. You see, you just squeeze this, squeeze it. this one a little bit harder, and suddenly it rings out great. And that means I could even put it really higher or over the bad side of the fret, for example, because it will sound better if I move it up this side. And it does pretty much ring out. Though yeah. to make it sound better, you would put it at this side exactly. of the fret. So what does that enable you to do? Well, if we had a song that was G and C, and that was our song. But we could not change between G and C that quickly to be able to play that song. Capo third fret, and it's suddenly either E and A, which are the two chords that I teach any yep. beginner, but also E or A sus two, which is even easier. Because mm -hmm. we're opening, this one isn't a total beginner kind of talk through, we're gonna be covering some higher level stuff, yep. including hearing key changes and all that kind of thing. But that's a, a really important thing to be aware of. Um, but G is a really guitar friendly key. G sharp, <laughs> not guitar no. friendly at all. Let's, let's play that song that is well known in the key of G sharp. Ah, don't know, but there probably is one. Here I am in the key of G sharp now. And I'm still just playing that standard just E chord. And to me, it looks and feels the same. The strings are held down even more than, you know, closer to the fretboard than they would be. So again, making it easier to play, easier to press mm -hmm. down. And, um, and there are a few tricks you were mentioning earlier, you'd like me to talk, to talk a little bit about, you know, common things that we yeah. can do to, to, uh, to play more chords. So the key of E is very common in um, guitar land, but it has a lot of bar chords or trickier yeah. ways to play those chords. 
So for a lot of songs, we might think um, of the key of E as you change your chord sheet to be appropriate for the capo at the second fret and a D chord, which you would do by using the transpose feature on a website for songs. <laughs> there are many of them, I'm not going to mention any particular one, but I think we all know which one we mean. So yeah, and that is suddenly sounds like an E major chord if you play that E chord. They're the same chord. I think a song that I would play with this would be like James Sit Down. Oh sit down, oh sit yeah. down. Sit down next to me. And that would be E, A and B. The B you could play as a B7, but typically to yeah. play James Sit Down, yeah. you'd be thinking the full bar chord. Exactly. Suddenly not a beginner song with a capo, it totally yeah. is. Um, there are other songs that you need a capo to be able to play, yeah. such as Wonderwall. You cannot play Wonderwall along to the record no. without a capo. You just need to, unless you retuned your guitar or something yeah. crazy, that's just how it's played. Um, how, when did you get a capo? How did you typically use I it? I think I was a bit late as well. And I think I, I bypassed a bit of the difficulty with capo. So I've had some students say to me, but, you know, well, this song, I'm going to need a capo. But where do I put it? And I go, well, actually, that's how, how do I tell someone? How do I show someone how to know? So I kind of got a bit later as well. So I was already happy with bar chords and transposing keys and things like that because I could visualize what the closest of these cage shapes were. So, so I got, you're already thinking about the cage shapes by the time you got a right, capo or a capo, so we have to admit. Absolutely. So, um, Again, there are songs that you need a capo to be able to play. I think a couple of famous ones like Hotel California would be capo 7th fret. Mm -hmm. Live, they play um, capo 5th fret yeah. to make it easier for the for singer, singing. which is a, a thing that you can do. Happen, Another benefit of that. Yeah. Um, it's, otherwise, you'd be detuning your guitar if you wanted the key to be lower mm -hmm. as a, a singer typically, whereas if your capo is, say, 5th fret, you just lower mm -hmm. it. Um, the first time I recognized that, oh, that's a trick that I can remember lots, is the key of C, which the, the chord C, G, yeah, that song again that we covered so much in the, uh, in the acoustic guitar episode. Um, if we move that to capo fifth fret and think of it as the key of G, that's the same thing. The key of G sounds like the key of C. If you stay on the C chord for me one oh, second, yeah. just go to go to the normal um go to without the capo just for one second so we can demo this together. Oh, yeah. So you're on a C chord and you're in the key of C. I'm on a G chord, but the capo's at the fifth fret, but these chords sound the same. Three, two, one. One more time, nice and loud. Okay, mine sounds a bit more spangly because it's got higher it's strings, but but every string is the same letter name. All the name. notes are the exact same. Um, so that was real, that was hallelujah I, I learned where I was like, ah, <laughs> key of C. I've seen chords in the key of C, but this one's in the key of G because of the way that Jeff Buckley played it. Yeah. Uh, and that was a, a big one for me, for sure. Anything's in the key of B. I've got a few beginner songs that I teach in the key of, that are in the key of B, mm -hmm. which would be B, E and F sharp. Already, you know that famous F sharp chord that all beginners know? <laughs> no, not really, not on guitar. So, it's suddenly A, D, and E. Yeah. And that sounds like B, play the B chord, a E chord, and F sharp. So again, two bar chords. And now didn't you need, have didn't to need them any. because of the acoustic. And when we did our absolute beginners episode, mm -hmm. And we saw how hard it was just to play yeah. basic open chords and to get stuff ringing <laughs> out. This really, really helps. Really. There are other things though. Uh, I think there are, just forget, sticking to the point of this video and how to learn more songs, there are ways that we can do this not needing a capo and not requiring it from both patterns on the fretboard and the way it sounds. I and think these will actually link into helping find where to put a capo as well for people who Abs don't understand. Absolutely, I think so. But, but to start off with, I want to make it as simple as when I first learnt and memorised the chords to Wonderwall, which are E minus 7 played like this, to a G, mm -hmm. to a D, and then it's sort of a like bit a of debate a whether it, it's a debate whether it's an A or whether you keep that middle yeah. finger off. But, you know, it's, uh, those are the it's chords, something. basically. Whichever one you go for. Um, I sort of saw that as going round in a shape, uh -huh. round the fretboard like this. I was a very visual learner, and until I could put things into a shape on the fretboard, 
anything else was no good for me when mm. I was first learning. The tab, the notes on the page were not the best way for me to memorize stuff. They might be a great way for me to check or so say if I was learning a new scale or a new riff, a tab would be a great way for me to check or eventually to be able to sight read it and learn it. But in the early days, shapes on the fretboard, I was much quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and the same way when we get into what is the diatonic chords in the key of C or, or any key. Yeah. So do you want to give us the quickest description mm -hmm. of what is known as diatonic chords or the Nashville numbering system or the one, four, five, all of these different terms, which are <laughs> essentially the same thing, but can lead to a world of confusion, but yes. is how I think about songs whenever I learn them. This, this is, is what I'm, I'm listening for and, I'm, and how I learn them. I, how I remember songs is not C, C chord, four. then visually visualize a G mm -hmm. chord and then all of that. Don't remember that. I remember it as the one, four, five, etc. So we are talking about major scale keys. So mm -hmm. if we think of a major scale, we have seven notes in that scale. Each of those seven notes will give you a chord. So you have seven chords in the key. You can number each of those chords from one to seven. Now, once you've got that, you can just start changing the keys of things. So if we look at the, the key of C, one is major, so C major. The second note is D, and the second chord is minor, so D minor. Third note is E, the third chord is minor. Fourth is F, and the fourth chord is major, so F major. The fifth is G, and it's a major. The sixth is A, and it's a minor. And the seventh is the freaky one, the diminished, this is B. It would be diminished. Practically, rarely played like that, but what that stays true to, and another way to explain this, is the major scale played in C mm -hmm. is all the notes on a piano keyboard, all the white, all the white notes. notes. So the black keys would be um, the sharps and flats, but that is all the white notes. And to play every one of those chords that you just played mm -hmm. on a piano, you're just moving the triad exactly. up each of just the white the keys and you're not playing any of the sharps and flats. That is how elemental this is, because this is not a guitar thing. No. This is a music thing, which is literally color coded on a piano. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's, it's so elemental. And I will also say that uh, the black notes are essentially the minor pentatonic scale. If you start from uh, the E flat note or the, the major pentatonic, if you start from the G sharp note, uh, <laughs> I, might have, I might have flummoxed myself there. But yes, the, it's the pentatonic scale on the black keys. Hence the band, mm -hmm. that's how they get their name. And the white keys is the major pentatonic. It is major scale harmony though that everything gets pulled mm -hmm. back to exactly. with refer re reference to this. And then as you get higher up or as you go into the blues realm, it starts to get mixed more with uh -huh. minor. So let's keep it nice and simple, right? Absolutely. So we've got so the number system now. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's recap it because yep. that can be a lot that's to really memorize. Awesome. From C. So you want to remember, first of all, the one, four, and five, because they're the major chords and they're the ones that are going to get used mm -hmm. in most songs. It's C, F, and G. I saw a great thing about this, actually. So here's something to help you remember that. Let's take your note on E string. This, is all, this will work from the E string to the A string, but let's take it from the E. So we've got our note C. We want to know what the major chords are. Mm -hmm. We will do this shape. Absolutely. Each of those notes are the major in the key. And if you want the minors, down three frets and mm -hmm. the same shape. And now we've got all the minor notes or minor chords in the key. And Fantastic. A really like useful shortcut that you can kind of, what is that? Oh, okay, that's it. So let's, let's make that pra practical. Let's try it. What you recommended to start with was um, the note of the key on string six. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking the one, four, five was C, F and G. Um, we are requiring at least the knowledge of how to play power chords to do this. So if you're thinking, you know, you can't play the full bar chords yet, though bar chords would be best, you could do the same thing with power chords. Yep. This is what punk guitarists do. <laughs> Absolutely. But we have the one, the four, and the five. And then you said for the minors, move it down one, two, three. Mm -hmm. So we'd get A minor, D minor, and E minor. The power of doing this as more of a shapes way of learning, higher up the fretboard, is we could do that in any key. So let's pick the, the really 
horrendous. We said G sharp earlier. I don't. I remember me mentioning oh. G sharp. <laughs> yeah. Let's try and do that same thing okay. to know all the chords as quickly as possible in the key of G sharp. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Okay, so I look for the G sharp note on the E string, fourth fret. I do my shapes. That'll give me my majors. So that's G sharp. On the fourth fret of the A string is C sharp, and then that's D sharp. So Which, just for what? a second, that can seem, whoa, hang on, he's, he's saying the name of sharps there, but that's one fret above right. the G and C note that everybody would know very quickly mm -hmm. if you just gave it that bit of attention to think, mm -hmm. okay, that's a G chord, that's the root note of it. It stands to reason, one fret up from that is a sharp, and then we have the one, four, five, it's all the normal three chords that you've always played, but the sharp version. That's how I learned actually these annoying sharp ones that don't come up that often, but it's good to know when they do come up. I just think, oh, well, it's just one up from G or C, exactly. you know, which is which. And is it does put you in an odd place on the fretboard, but mm -hmm. that's it. And then the minors as well. And the minors, right? So, down, now we've got, well, F minor. F minor. It's tricky. For many people to play, but B flat minor and C minor. Well, C minor. Now they'll be called slightly different when it comes to this. We'll come to that in a second tricky. because I would even argue that you don't have to know even the names of those chords for this to be super, super useful for you. Because I think the higher level at guitar you get, the less, as a guitar player especially, you, the less you start referring to these chords as their chord names. And the more you just think about it as the one chord, two, three, four, you just think of these chords as numbers uh -huh. because the same thing then applies no matter what key you're mm -hmm. in. So say if we had a chord sequence and it was in the key of B flat. Yes. Actually quite a common guitar key, especially if you like Chuck Berry rock and rolls because that's a really common piano key for mm -hmm. the blues rock stuff. Um, you have your one, four, five, mm -hmm. which is most of those songs, the 12 bar blues. And you, it would be the same pattern yep. that you would follow if you're following, say, that 12-bar blues pattern. And then moving down to the minor chords, it's the same position. It's the same movements that you would make on the fretboard. Mm -hmm. And all you're thinking of when you remember that, it's way more useful to think about it and way easier to remember to remember the numbers and remember those moves, perhaps the sound of it, that sound of going from the major um, tonic, the, the one chord, to the minor six, has a sound to it, which no matter what key you're in, Sounds the same. you can hear the one, four, and five. Just showing off that I can play bar chords really, <laughs> that's all. Um, the one, four, five sounds the same relative to the one. So C, F, and G sounds relatively the same as D, G, and A. Uh -huh. But every time we do that, it's something else to remember because of sharps and flats and yeah. things like that. So uh, you need that basic theory of knowing what notes exist. Many people learn that as the note circle or just remembering that there's a sharp and flat between every note apart from E and F and B and C. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no B sharp. Um, and that, that will get you so much further than having to remember what's the second chord what's the in the chord key of there? G sharp. You know, uh -huh. you, you're not often put on the spot like that, no. unless you're a teacher actually. Yeah. It's only when it, you, know, you get put on answering a question from a student. Or sometime. you're me and guess that tune. <laughs> <on> that tune. <laughs> but you, you spoke on, you got on about um, ear training, mm. essentially, is what we call it. Being able to hear what type of chord where the chord moves to is a really useful skill for this, right? So it starts off nice and simple. Now you might look at that and say, well, I know that's an E major because I recognize the shape. So you might think it's easy, but can you hear that it's a major chord is happy? And then that this one, E minor, is sad. That's the beginning. Can mm -hmm. you identify a chord? Go and listen to some, some songs, some tracks, and listen to the chord because you won't be able to see it, and then say, I think that's a major chord, that's a major sound, that's a minor chord. That's half the battle. Absolutely. And then the next thing you can do is listen to the movements, like you were doing the one four fives. Let's take one chord move at a time. Let's go one four. Or 
or 4 or 1. You can still hear the same qualities moving. Try to identify that chord movement. And then when you're happy, go 1 5. And again, listen for the, different, the differences in those more chord movements, and you'll start to realize that every change from one chord to another has a unique sound which sounds the same across all keys. So that's one way that really you can learn songs a lot faster. Mm. I have now, quite thankfully, gotten to the point where I can listen to a song. If someone tells me what key it is, I can just listen to the track and say, okay, I know what the chords are. Through the numbering system and mm. through ear training, listen to it, that's a major chord, so it's one, that's a, that's a five chord, major, whatever it is, and it's so useful. And this is how it starts, build it up slowly. Do you have anything to add for that, Andy? I have endless amounts of stuff to do okay. on this because um, it is something that helps so much and it was something that came to me more naturally than I've seen it come to others. Um, perhaps because I sing as well and always mm -hmm. wanted to sing. I sang a little bit before I played guitar. Even if it's just in school, I could hold a tune mm -hmm. from being an, an early age and, and get a tune out of something. And that just makes all of this connect. I was also had a lot of piano lessons before I started learning guitar properly, which meant when I was playing guitar, I was trying to find the stuff, find the chords, find mm -hmm. the notes that I knew how to play on piano, which instinctively makes you go, La, you sort of sing it along in your yeah. mind and that connection is always being improved and forged. And without that connection, um, th there's only so much you're going to get out of playing guitar. Um, I would also say, I would also argue that if you don't look at this and if you get to a higher level in guitar without this skill, so say you're like, I just want to learn songs and I can read tab and, or I read traditional sheet music, maybe you're a classical player or something. If you don't do this skill, the, those people are the people that I've seen stop playing out of choice because then lose interest in it. Mm -hmm. These are the grade eight pianists that study at, you know, then go on to degree level or guitar players that, you know, learn to shred and then just, they just stop because they never learn how to actually find their voice on the instrument and play what they hear. And they couldn't play a note perhaps without the sheet music in front of them. I've been to a lot of gigs in my life and there have been very few of them where the musicians have actually had the sheet music in front of yeah. them at the gigs that I would pay to. When you do that, it tends to be a classical gig, it's an orchestra and things like that. Pulling this back to how that enables you to learn more songs, being aware of that, if you can play what you hear, you have freedom on the instrument. Mm -hmm. Even if you have limited skill, the ear training will, will be more useful to you than faster fingers, yep. typically. Yep. And it, it's such a hard thing because in the early days, you know, that's what you want, the, the faster fingers, the skill. But the ear training allows you to play so much more, remember so much more. That musical memory. How many riffs have we all learnt and then we're like, oh, I used to be able to play that, I can't remember it. It's a lack of a musical memory. And that is such a trainable thing and something that I need to train more on my YouTube channel and do so much more on it. But the reason I haven't done so much on it is I appreciate that what we learnt in the acoustic beginner mm -hmm. episode and the electric one, Without the physical skill first, <laughs> yeah. no one's going to take the time to learn the ear training. Yeah, the it's, it, takes, it, it does take the skills that have to build up together and I put aside to the yeah. physical skill you first, kind of, absolutely. That's the most important one. But when you're at this intermediate and going on to advanced level, I would say, and there are a lot of beginner ways into it and it can be your way to learn. It really helped me, mm -hmm. there's absolutely no doubt. There, uh, there was a magic that happened as well the first time that I played a riff. I think it was a Travis song or something. So yeah. first thing I played on acoustic guitar and it sounded exactly like the recording as I remembered it. Something really clicked in mm -hmm. my mind then where, like that's amazing. Yeah. Maybe because I played a lot of keyboard and learned a lot of keyboard it never quite sounded right. Mm -hmm. So I just played this, I think it was like Sing or something by Travis and it just sounded exactly like it. I was like wow. That, that's a buzz. Yeah. That is a real buzz. And I just, I think I just followed that as much as I can, yeah. really. But yeah, there's a lot of um, higher level theory that I actually learned, first of all, from hearing the sound of it. Like you'd hear it in a song on the radio what is and that? you think, what is that? I'm going to learn that when I get home. And then you'd see, oh, wow. So that's what a diminished chord is or something. Right. So you build up from that core major 
minor, suddenly, once you're happy with that, go to sevens, you'll hear mm. another, mm. kind of just kind of stick that on another pin board in your head. Okay, that's the major seventh mm. sound. For the sound of it as well, like it's, the, it's the way to get that piano jar, uh, piano bar yeah. sound, just by playing. I think that's a Smith song, actually. <laughs> it's, it's automatic uh, sophistication. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it is. It makes everything sound a lot cleverer. And you think, I want that sound, I'm going to play that theory thing that I know. It starts with the sound. Nobody gets into guitar really, yeah, if they're honest to with themselves, <laughs> to think, oh, I want to learn the mixolydian mode. That's, that's, <laughs> that's why I started. And you might realize that afterwards, yeah, yeah. that that was the sound that you wanted, but it's the sound that happens first. It's the song that happened first without songs. None of this exists. There would be no another guitar show no. without songs. Songs are a really good thing. We should all learn more of them. I think they had a, f a lot of tips. Little, yeah. If there was one thing that we could leave people with that would be like, do, do this to learn more songs, we could summarize it with a capo is far too useful not mm -hmm. to get. Starting, starting with the shapes on the fretboard, and I think that is such a massive one. The one, four, and five, and then the minor ones. Mm -hmm. you do, it does require some knowledge of bar chords to make the most of that. But that makes a, that's about as well as I've heard it put. I think for every chord in any key, that's about as well as I've seen it put. And then basic ear training, telling the difference between major and minor, and then seventh chords. The different, you know, is is it a G chord? Is it a C chord? All all that uh -huh. kind of thing. And then there are songs that are easier to work out by ear, and then there are those songs that yeah. are super hard to work out by ear. Um, just to finish up, I would always side on learning more songs, structure, keeping this, making sure that the song structure is simple will enable you to learn more uh -huh. songs because you know the first four bars, you know the song. Yeah. 12 bar blues, you know, after you learn the first 12 bars, you That's got right. it. Maybe there's a stop in the middle or something, but pretty much you got it. And the expectation of structure. Exactly. Once you yeah. do so many songs, you'll probably a verse chorus or a verse pre-chorus chorus you start to just see these patterns of the way that people have built these songs and you can kind of you're just, expecting that repetition yeah, you expect it and you kind of learn when it's going to come as well and you go okay well, middle eight like after that. just before two minutes maybe oh yeah middle eight for the, before the last chorus exactly you know all those little those good little tips are so, so useful. song structure and that exists to keep the listeners attention there's a reason most yeah. songs are three and a half minutes it's because that's the that's average so attention span of humans yeah. <laughs> that's how well this is packaged for us basically but it really does keep the attention very well for about three and a half minutes and then we're like i need something else now maybe that um, next another guitar show needs to, <laughs> to keep the uh, to keep the attention span in the middle we have verse choruses and guitar solos and things mm -hmm. the more of that you have the harder it is going to be to learn um yeah i hope that's been yeah i hope that's been a lot of use to you i know we get so many questions on this and they, they would be the first points of call. Much more on this to come. Let us know what you want to see from another guitar show. Let us know in the comments below. And this show is going out every Sunday, around a 30 minute show on the Andy Guitar and the Your Guitar Academy YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to both to see every episode. And that's been us for today. Thank oh, you for watching. Bye for now. Bye for now.